Hello and welcome to Boston Magazine's Taste, presented by Stella Artois. I'm Scott Kernan, food and entertainment editor at Boston Magazine, and so thrilled that you can join us tonight for this hybrid taste program. Your ticket purchase is benefiting an amazing organization called Mass Restaurants United. This is a group that was founded during the COVID-19 pandemic to advocate for the survival of the Massachusetts restaurant industry, which is going through a period right now unlike any that it's seen. Your ticket also earns you access to our Taste Passport program. Now what this does is it offers access to 60 plus restaurants that are giving exclusive deals and discounts that you can take advantage of through the end of the year. It's an amazing way to get out there, try new food, and also help keep these restaurants doors open. So thank you so much for being a part of that. Tonight, though, I'll be turning the reins over to Maker's Mark for an exciting evening dedicated to one of my favorite things, whiskey. <laughs> First, they will have a Bourbon 101 featuring Maker's Mark and Maker's Mark 46 with Tim Heisler, American Whiskey Ambassador for Beam Centauri. Then, Brian McDougall, head bartender at Lookout Rooftop and Bar here in Boston, will teach us the proper technique for a delicious, full-flavored bourbon cocktail creation. I'm very excited to try that. Hopefully, you also picked up a bottle and are ready to follow along. I definitely am, as you have seen already. So please, sit back, enjoy a night with Maker's Mark, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Saving Boston's Restaurants, which will be a conversation with some incredible restaurant operators in town who are also civic leaders doing everything they can to save the restaurant industry. Cheers. It's not easy crafting the distinctive full flavor taste of Maker's Mark. Getting all our water from our very own limestone filtered lake. Getting red winter wheat instead of the usual rye from this one family farm. And aging to taste by constantly sipping bourbon. Wait. All this sounds pretty nice, actually. No wonder we've been doing it this way for so long. This season, give our best to yours. It's been sunny for two weeks, or one day to film. It's raining, but we're going to the roof of Envoy. Come on in. All right. Well, while we're waiting for our, our bartender and buddies to let us upstairs to Envoy, at least we, we escaped the rain, came inside the hotel. Um, how we doing, Boston? My name is Tim Heisler, American Whiskey Ambassador for Beam Suntory, uh, our first ever Boston Magazine Taste Virtual. I don't know. I wish we were in person. I, I'm used to doing these in person, so we're, we're moving to virtual for the for the first time. Um, haven't been to Boston since March, so it's very good to be back. Even though it's cloudy and dreary, I'm so so glad to be back in Boston. Really excited today. We're gonna we're gonna take you upstairs meet our, our lead bartender, Brian, and talk to you about all things Maker's Mark and American Whiskey. So uh, come along for the journey. All right, so we made it up to the rooftop here at the Envoy Hotel. Uh, before we go over and chat with their lead bartender, Brian, and have some cocktails, we gotta at least talk to you about Maker's Mark and, and Bourbon 101. If I didn't do that, then I'm, I'm not doing my job at all. Uh, so whiskey, right, it's a very broad paintbrush stroke. Whiskey can be made anywhere, anywhere in the world. Um, you can make it in Scotland, you can make it in Ireland, you can make it in Japan. Today what we're talking about though is bourbon. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. What are the 101s of bourbon? What does bourbon mean from a legal standpoint to actually put that on your label? Uh, so bourbon, rule number one, we gotta be made in America. Biggest misconception is that all bourbon has to come from Kentucky. Legally we do not have to, uh, but Kentucky is the homeland. It's, it's, where, it's where we started and it's where our roots are. Also very important aspect to Kentucky is our water source. Kentucky sits on a very thick bed of limestone. Very important for the water. What that does is, as our rainwater filters down, that limestone, it removes iron and imparts calcium. It's a very long way of saying it makes really, really nice bourbon. But legally, gotta be made in the United States. Rule number two, our grain that we use, the grain that we're gonna cook, ferment, and distill to eventually put into that barrel, it's gotta be at least 51% corn. We're gonna talk a bit more about the, the, the grain and the mash bill of Maker's Mark and why that's so unique in just a little bit. Third rule, I just mentioned it, barrel. We gotta be put into a brand new charred white oak barrel. We only use them once, one time use. We cannot reuse them. This is typically if we were in person, someone would say, hey Tim, what do you do with those barrels when you're done? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, we can sell them to just about anybody. Do you drink tequila? Do you drink rum? Do you drink scotch whiskey? Do you drink bourbon barrel aged beer? Hot sauce, maple syrup, the list goes on and on and on. 
but to call it bourbon, one time use. Now we're gonna get a little, little geeky, a little scientific. We talk about alcohol content and the percentage of alcohol. Uh, when we come off that still, when we're distilling our whiskey, that liquid can be no higher than 160 proof or 80% alcohol. When we enter that barrel, it can be no hotter than 125 proof. And last but not least, when it enters this bottle, we ship it out to liquor stores and to bars or to your homes, uh, it can be no lower than 80 proof or 40% alcohol. If you follow those guidelines, you are making bourbon whiskey. What makes Maker's Mark unique? What makes it special? Uh, we're gonna talk, first thing, first thing we're gonna discuss is the mash bill, that grain, that grain percentage that we use to distill uh, and then create this beautiful whiskey. Uh, a lot of bourbon distilleries will use that majority corn, they'll back it up with rye, which would be their flavoring grain, and then a little bit of malted barley, which is very important for our fermentation process. Maker's Mark is what we call a weeded bourbon. So we have a majority of corn, our secondary grain is gonna be soft red winter wheat. Wheat allows this whiskey to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit rounder, and we still have some of that malted barley as well. As the Samuels family was creating Maker's Mark in the 1950s, they did not want anything dry or bitter. They wanted to avoid that flavor profile, which is why they got rid of that rye and brought in wheat instead. So Maker's Mark you'll see, comparatively to some others, maybe a little bit sweeter, a bit rounder, which is exactly what the Samuels were going for. So, Bill Samuels, our founder, he's the one that created this recipe, put all the effort into, into creating that, that liquid, and it was his wife Margie that created this packaging that we're all very, very familiar with, I hope. Uh, every one of these bottles still hand dipped into this red wax. That was Margie's doing. She dipped that first bottle of whiskey in this red wax and it just kind of stuck. If you come down to our distillery, uh, I like to say that it is a very inefficient distillery by design, and it's all done by hand, and that will never change. Okay, so nothing, nothing machine operated there when it comes to, to dipping these bottles. You'll see, always see very unique drip on each one of these. Uh, these labels right here, we still cut every one of these paper labels four at a time on a foot press. Again, when, when tours are real and, and Kentucky's back open, we, we hope you come and visit our distillery and you can just see how much effort is put into this packaging. There's a little, a little circle right here, a little stamp I always like to break down as well. The S on that Maker's Mark bottle stands for Samuels, the last name. There's a star right here, Star Hill Farms. That's the farm that the Samuels were living on at the time. And then this IV, uh, or fourth, that was kind of paying a nod to the lineage of, of the Samuels family dis, uh, distillers. So the Samuels actually go back to making whiskey in Scotland. So Bill Samuels was the, the fourth in the, in the line of, of family distillers. You'll also notice a little, little bar trick for you, whiskey. Typically with bourbon whiskey, we're gonna, we're gonna drop that E in there, whiskey with an EY. Uh, Maker's Mark, drop that E. Again, a little, little tip of the hat to our, our family lineage, go back to our, our distillers in Scotland. So, a little bit of Maker's Mark history there. Uh, now we're actually gonna start drinking. That's the fun part. First tasting, we go with our traditional Maker's Mark, bottled at 90 proof. Now, before, we actually nose and actually sip this bourbon. Oh, you know what? I got a dipped glass, so it might be a little difficult, but I think I can still do it. What we wanna do is you wanna hold that whiskey up to the light. If you're sitting at home, you got a, got a window by your side. I got, I got a lot of windows by my side. Take a look at the color on this glass. Day one whiskey is as clear as water, it's as clear as vodka. 100% of that color that we're getting out of this, this whiskey is coming from that barrel, that one-time use barrel. So what does that tell us? When you get a look at the color on it, it could give you maybe a rough idea of how old that whiskey is, or maybe give you a rough idea of the proof on it. The longer the whiskey sits in that barrel, the more color it's gonna get from that interaction with the barrel. When we dump those barrels out at cast strength, uh, cast strength whiskey is much higher, right? We fill these barrels at a higher, higher proof percentage. At Maker's Mark, we fill this barrel at 110 proof for 55% alcohol. When we bottle it though, at 90 proof, that means we're adding a bit of water. So when you add water, you lighten the color. So if you look at the color on your whiskey, again, maybe a good idea of the age, maybe a good idea of the proof. Uh, this got a nice amber color to it. We don't like to say that our whiskey's brown. There's much more beautiful colors. When you look at there's much more nuances to it. Is it straw? Is it hay? Is it amber? Is it golden amber? So really try to break down the color of it. As we nose this whiskey, we are not nosing a beer, we are not nosing a wine, right? This is 45% ethanol. So if you can't smell, you can't taste. So I recommend that you keep your lips open as you nose your whiskey. 
Helps to naturally kind of circulate your breathing. You get a big old whiff of ethanol, you're gonna kill your olfactory sense. Can't taste. I know everyone at home, you're a professional chef now, you're making sourdough bread from scratch every day and pasta by hand, so, you know, we don't wanna kill our sense of taste, right? Sorry, our sense of smell. And then as we taste this whiskey, let's roll it around, right? Call it the Kentucky Chew. Let it hit every aspect of your mouth, the sides of your cheek, the roof of your mouth, the back of your tongue. As you do that, you really start to pull out some of those flavors that might have been masked by that higher alcohol content. Great. I love Maker's Mark for me. One of my go-tos, neat. Uh, if, it's, if it's still, maybe it's a little tough for you, maybe you're, you're new to the American whiskey world, new to the bourbon world, add an ice cube, add a drop of water, make a cocktail. Whatever you do to find your level of comfort and, and where that whiskey resonates with your palate, you're not wrong. If we all the same palate, we wouldn't be here right now. So I, I encourage people to add an ice cube, add some water, uh, find out where you and that bourbon come together for your palate. So that's our, our, our old school maker's mark, right? We've been, we've been producing this since 1953. And we haven't really changed anything. Like I said, still hand dipping these bottles, still cutting these paper labels. Um, as the maker's mark, demand went up and as the brand got larger, we didn't build a larger still, right? So depending on the width and the height of your still is gonna determine how much whiskey you can make. We didn't build a larger one or a taller one, we just got a replica one. We put a second one right side by side in our distillery. Demand went up again. We now have three identical operating stills to create Maker's Mark as consistently as we've been doing at day one. So Maker's Mark, uh, for, for decades and decades, never made another brand. It was just Maker's Mark. And with that, you need to ensure that all of your barrels are maturing very consistently and very evenly, right? We're not making 10 different brands at the Maker's Mark distillery. We're just making Maker's Mark. So with that, we actually hand rotate all of our barrels. Barrel of whiskey, 53 gallons. When that's full of whiskey, you're looking at about 520 pounds. Every one of those barrels is loaded into our warehouses by hand. You want to meet a whole lot of guys and gals you want to arm wrestle? Come down to Loretta, Kentucky. Come meet our warehouse people. I promise you, you're going to lose. I'm going to put money on it. But we want you to come down and try anyway. So they roll all these barrels into warehouses by hand. But the way that the warehousing and the way that these barrels interact, these are non-climate controlled warehouses, right? We're not wintertime, summertime. These barrels are eating and sleeping and breathing with the seasons that are going on around outside. In the wintertime, our barrels do exactly what you and I would do when we walk outside, like we're going to be doing in Boston pretty soon. They clench up, right? It's kind of what our whiskey and what our barrels do. They all kind of come together and chill out for a little bit. Summertime. Summertime is when our whiskey is getting a lot more interaction with that barrel. That's where the barrels expand, the whiskey, whiskey expands, and it's getting much more interaction with that, that layer of chard I mentioned, those brand new charred barrels. Right behind that, we call that our, our red line. That's where there's caramelized sugars. That's where we get this color. That's where we get those flavors. So, top floors of our warehouses in the summertime, it could be 100 degrees, 110 degrees. Bottom floors could be 85 or 90 degrees. So vastly, vastly different climates, different airflow, different water levels in the air. It's gonna produce a very different barrel. But at Maker's Mark, because we're only making one product, we hand rotate them. So Maker's Mark, roughly uh, six years in a barrel. So about every three years, we're gonna take barrels from the top floor, we're gonna hand rotate them down to the first floor. Same thing, first floor up to the top, floors two and five also change, floors three and four don't move. That ensures that all of our barrels be as consistent as possible and very labor intensive uh, I said earlier it's a very inefficient distillery by design and it still is some of my favorite days at the Maker's Mark distillery are when they let me actually into the warehouses and roll barrels uh, I'm not very good at it I don't really have the size for it but they at least entertain me and let me get in there for a few hours and eventually they scoop me out and tell me to go back to the tasting room or something like that so since 1953 we've only been producing Maker's Mark. Bill and Margie Samuels, the founders, the creators, they eventually handed that distillery off to their son, Bill Jr. And it was around 2008, 2009, Bill Jr. realized that he was getting ready to retire and his entire life all he'd done was just make his mother and father's product. So we wanted to finally put out something new, a little bit of a twist, something different, his own legacy to leave behind with the Maker's Mark brand name. And he came up with Maker's Mark 46. 
Uh, it was actually released in 2010, so 2020. We're celebrating the, the 10 year release of Maker's Mark 46. Very interesting process in creating Maker's Mark 46. We talked a bit, our, a bit about our barrels, right? Brand new, charred, white oak, one time use. White oak is, is pretty much across the board, just the industry standard for making bourbon. Well, Bill Jr. went to Independence Dave Company, it's the Cooperage that we source all of our barrels from, talked with their wood science lab, he said, hey, I love Maker's Mark, I love what we're doing, but I, I want to put a finish on it, I want to put a twist on it. So they created this, uh, this stave of, of French oak. And basically what we do is, I, I mentioned Maker's Mark, all roughly six years old. When it hits that peak point of maturation, it's all matured to taste, so some might be a little younger than six years, some might be a little older than six years, but when it hits that point of, this is Maker's Mark, we hit our point of Maker's Mark, we pop the top of that barrel off, we take these uh, French oak staves, we take 10 of them, we drop them directly into that barrel of whiskey, put the top back on, we let it sit for nine weeks. So nine weeks intermingling with this brand new French oak stave is what creates Maker's Mark 46. And you'd be amazed at what 10 staves and nine weeks can do to a product. So that's where we get 46 from. Maker's Mark 46. This name was also developed by Independent Stave Company. Uh, it was their French oak profile number 46. Uh, it did not take 46 attempts. It took many more than that. Um, 46 people did not die in creating this. Okay, I'm gonna squash the rumors now. It was French oak profile number 46 that led to Maker's Mark 46 bottled at a slightly higher proof, it's at 94 proof, so a little bit bigger uh, than the Maker's Mark, a little bit bolder. This for me, I mentioned Maker's Mark, for me, neat all day, I enjoy it. I really like a nice large ice cube with the 46, but you know, for tasting sake, uh, and because I don't have an ice well to my left hand side, we're just we're gonna do a neat, a neat pour as well. So here's the 46. And this was really interesting and, and really kind of groundbreaking. I remember uh, I was bartending at the time when this came out and I was so intrigued by this, this wood finishing series and, and introducing French oak to American whiskey. It wasn't very common. We've seen a lot more products in the past 10 years that have come out that are maybe doing a sherry influence or a port cask influence, certainly French oak influence. So this was really, um, from an innovation standpoint, just, just huge for, the, for Maker's Mark and for the bourbon industry in general. Same thing, get a look at, look at the color on that. Still age-wise, we're looking, again, just, just probably over six years now with that nine extra weeks and a little bit higher alcohol content. Get a lot more vanilla with the Maker's Mark 46. Personally, again, maybe you don't at home, but personally, I get a, a lot more like kind of vanilla bean coming through on the 46. Since Maker's Mark 46 came out, we've also had asks and requests to taste Maker's Mark at cast strength or even at higher proof than 94. So we, we have released our cast strength Maker's Mark. I mentioned we fill all those barrels at 110 proof and because we hand rotate them, that proof in those barrels stay, stays relatively consistent. So if you pick up a bottle of Maker's Mark cast strength, it usually fluctuates between the 100 and seven and 108 proof, maybe up to 112, but very, very consistent maturation in those barrels. Uh, we've also released a private select program. We actually bring people down to our distillery. So whether it's the folks here at the Envoy, uh, maybe your local liquor, liquor store, they've came down to Loretto, Kentucky, and they, they come to a very awesome tasting room and they taste how all of these different staves developed by Independent Stave Company affect Maker's Mark. And you literally build out your own barrel and you do your own very unique selection of wood stay finishes to create your personalized barrel of Maker's Mark. So keep your eyes out for a, a private select bottle, again at a bar, a restaurant, your local store. Uh, and then this, this year, this Christmas, we are releasing the, uh, I'm sorry, this holiday season, we're releasing the Maker's Mark 101. So a traditional Maker's Mark, about 101 proof. That's what Bill and Margie used to gift to their friends in Kentucky, their close friends and family, was Maker's Mark, about 101 proof. So another just, Keep that innovation line going, keep something new, something fresh out there. Uh, and you know, challenge your palate. Like I said, try them out. If it's a little tough, add an ice cube. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I, I like the 46 with a nice large ice cube. That's just me. So, cheers. Hope you enjoyed that little tasting, that little bourbon 101. I uh, hope you're able to keep up. I'm sure you were taking notes. I'm gonna polish this off and we're actually gonna head over to the bar. 
chat with Brian about some awesome cocktails that they're doing here at the hotel. Cheers. Okay, we have, we have transitioned. We are nearly sitting at a bar. First time in a long time. I'm here with Brian McDougall, lead bartender up here on the roof. Thank you for, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you for setting up this beautiful table for me. I got I I the whole place to myself. This yeah. is nice. And we're safe. And we are safe. We are being safe. Um, what am I drinking? What am I jumping into today? So this is our variation of a paper plane cocktail and a boulevardier. So you kind of have old and new style cocktails. Um, that being said, we are serving it in a one liter barrel for a table share uh, for, for all the guests to kind of partake in. Uh, that being said, we may combine the two because you don't want to put citrus into the barrel. Of course not. No citrus in a barrel. Never. Don't do that. So it is uh, Aperol, Maker's Mark, uh, Sweet Vermouth, and Amaro Nanino. Uh, and then finished off with a little bit of rhubarb bitters to supplement the lack of uh, true citrus in it. And then a little, little lemon twist as well. Get a little right, some it right up. fresh oils on top to get a little bit of lemon note going. Come and served in uh, the proper Maker's Mark mason jar. We're doing, the, if you check out the, the Boston Magazine website, a uh, bunch of bars and restaurants that are, are part of this will be dropping off while supplies last. These Maker's Mark mason jars, got a Maker's Mark cocktail to go, to stay. You get one of these nice mason jars to bring home with you as well. Man. I love it, you know? But the idea is that everybody can kind of enjoy that, you know, on a, even a colder night or, yeah. you know, you have a, even a warmer winter night, you know, you can still enjoy that equally. So. Yeah, it's great. And I mean, so, I mean, we got, we got some heaters up here, which is awesome. So I'm actually got to lose the jacket. Um, I have not been here on the roof fall or winter time, but my, my local team, my local colleagues here say, you guys got a pretty pretty cool setup on the roof, which is coming any day. So what what, what will you be doing up here this winter? Yeah, place to be for the winter. We, uh, so this will be our fourth season operating uh, during the winter months up here. Um, we do have an enclosure, so those that don't want to be 100% out in the elements have still the feel of being indoors, but still being able to enjoy the view that we offer here. Uh, we operate igloos, during the winter I months. I saw pictures, they look cool. Which I'm, are, I'm coming uh, back for it, I wish they up now, it looks cool. Which is a concept that's seeming to catch on more and more uh, kind of everywhere you look, especially with the environment that we're dealing with as far as, you know, offering service to guests in winter months in New England, you know, so. Yeah. Um, it's something we've been doing, as I say, this is our fourth season. Um, you can put about, you can put six people in there comfortably. Cool. Uh, they all come with their individual heaters, sound systems, so you can dial really? in your own Sonos into it and play your own playlists. So and you don't have to listen to my horrible music, uh, <laughs> but I will be playing it directly next door to your igloo, but you won't have to hear it. Well, That's we amazing. we do have volume control on them, so yeah. you, you, for that reason in particular. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're doing a, a limited food service up here, um, but it's, a, it's an interesting take. You know, it's something... Yeah something you're not going to find anywhere else. For sure. I was going to say, so I'm, I'm based, uh, based out of New York. I haven't seen any igloos there yet. Um, we cannot use propane heaters. We do have some of these electric heaters there, but the, the struggle is very real for the hospitality industry right now. So when I saw those images of the igloos out here, I was, I was psyched to see you found a creative solve and a, and a safe solve. Um, you know, any, anyone out there in the hospitality industry, our, our, our hearts are with you. We, we, we hope to... I hope to see everyone in person as soon as humanly possible. Um, but I'm glad you got the igloos up here. I'm gonna, I'll come back with three or four or five people if I can find that many friends up here willing to come out with me, listen to my bad music, and drink some of these. I'm excited. Well, I'd love to have you. Yeah, right on. And what are, your, what are you guys, uh, I mean, we're up here today. You're closed today. It's Tuesday, Wednesday? Today's uh, Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Close so we're actually Wednesdays. going to be, for our winter months, we're going to be open Wednesday through Sunday. Cool. Uh, roughly going to be doing, everything's by reservation. You can do that through our website here at the hotel um, or at table list as well. We're, that's how we're kind of regulating our, our reservation process. Um, yeah, so Wednesday through Sunday, and then Saturday and Sunday we're doing, we're actually doing brunch up here as well. Very cool. So. I mean, you got, you got the view for it. I know today it's a little rainy, it's a little cloudy. It's making it easier to film up here, which is great, but I mean, you said the sun sets up here, great, and yeah. We have an abundance of those, so you should come back on one Very of those cool. days and check Very cool. Oh, out. I will, for sure. 
All right, Boston, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, on behalf of Maker's Mark, we hope you learned something. Hope you got to have a drink at home. Please come up and visit the Envoy, the roof of the Envoy when it's, it's not raining. I just stepped outside. We wanted to film outside, so again, get a little wet for this little finale. Uh, check out bostonmagazine.com. You can see all the participating bars and restaurants that'll be featuring Maker's Mark for taste. Uh, but thank you again for Maker's Mark and Beam Centauri. Do it at your homes. We hope, we hope you're staying safe. We hope you're staying sane. And we hope to see you soon. Take care.